So we've just talked about sampling and the three big ideas. And now it's important for us to understand what are the methods that we can choose from in sampling. So suppose we have 20 men and 20 women in the statistics course, and we flip a coin to determine who to survey. Heads, we're going to survey all of the men, and tails, we're going to survey all of the women. Since each student does technically have an equal chance of being selected, this is considered a random sample, which is what we want. We want things to be random. However, if we talk to only men or only women, we might not get a sample that is representative of the whole. So we're going to talk about the different ways in, we, in which we can choose a random sample and that we are trying to, and this is key, we're trying to minimize bias and represent the population as best as possible. So there's a lot of different ways that we could go about it. There's no one exact way, but just keep in mind that's our goal. Minimize bias, represent the population as best as we can. Before we look at some of the methods, I did want to make sure that I covered the terminology that you might see or hear throughout the week. So the first is the sampling frame, and the sampling frame is essentially the list of all individuals from which the sample is drawn. So again, that's not the actual people that I've talked to, but the list of individuals from whom I could have chosen for the sample. And it's important that we're very specific on that sampling frame, who will be included, who will not be included, etc. And sampling variability, which is sometimes called sampling error, but uh, don't let that scare you because sampling variability or error is, is very normal and natural. If we look back at our M&M example where I was drawing M&Ms out of a bag, each time I tried to see how many M&Ms it would take to get one of each color, I would get a different response. That is known as sampling variability. So it's different because I'm talking to different people. The more that you do something, the more we're able to then kind of see what we would expect to happen. So just doing one sample might not be very indicative of the entire population. So we do several samples. We do look at that sampling variability, but that's essentially what that means is that it's going to be a little bit different each time we have a sample. All right, so let's talk about the ways that we can collect and gather data. The simple random sample is the easiest, the most common, SRS, we call it for short. And essentially what that means is that every single individual in the population has an equal chance of being selected. Looking at our 40 stat students example, I would essentially give everybody a number and then choose 20 random numbers from a random number table or using technology. The advantage there is that those 20 people should be representative of the population because they were randomly selected from those 40 students in the course. Stratified sampling, again, still random, but basically what this does is it divides the population into groups called strata, and then we use, and this is key, this is the most important part, we use proportionate amounts from each group. Um, that are randomly selected from the sample. So for instance, we had the 20 males and the 20 females, and if I wanted to find a sample of say 20 people from that class, I would then choose 10 males and 10 females. So I would be stratifying based on gender. So I would say the 20 males are going to get digits from 1 to 20, and I'm going to choose 10 of those randomly using, again, a random number generator. And then the 20 females are going to get numbers from 21 to 40, and then I'm going to choose 10 of those, again, using a random number generator. So when I'm done, I am assured that I will have 10 males and 10 females. Um, again, if I want to survey 200 students about funding for the basketball team, um, and the college is 55% women and 45% men, then I would have to take 110 women and 90 men in order to keep with the same proportions that are in the college. So stratified, all about putting people into groups based on a certain strata, a certain um, value, your income level, your gender, your race, your age, etc., and then making sure that those proportions stay consistent in your sample. Cluster sampling is another method that we can use, and a lot of people get confused between stratified and cluster, but they're very different from one another. So cluster essentially 
puts people randomly into clusters. So the easiest example is because I used to teach high school, I, there would be several classes of algebra or several classes of English or several classes, etc. And all of those classes are sort of their own separate entity. And so I'm going to randomly select a cluster. So I'm randomly selecting anybody in MA215 T301. And I'm going to talk to every single person in that course. And then I might also randomly select the same course, but say T101. Well, now I'm talking to all of the people in 301 and all of the people in 101, which is maybe not all of the residential students and maybe not all of the online students. Um, the benefit is that it can be less expensive and take less time, and you can be sure that everyone responds because if I'm talking to everybody in that group, say you're all coming to class, and I make you talk to me. Um, you have to then be careful though that your clusters are not um, biased in any way. So if we wish to find a representative survey of on campus, so residential BU students that we could use residential courses as a cluster. So we would take all of the courses, not just math, but any course that's happening um, and then randomly select certain classes. So this English class, this, um, you know, human physiology class, this MA 101 class, etc. We talk to everybody in those groups that were randomly chosen. Um, notice that it's different than stratified because we aren't trying to ensure that a certain characteristic is proportionally represented. Multi-stage sampling um, is where we would combine several methods. Most of the time you kind of stick with one, but an example would be if we want to determine attitudes about campus food service options, but are concerned about differences in opinion between men and women. Um, and each floor of a dorm is gender-based and there are 60% women and 40% men. I could choose two dorms, that's the cluster. I'm gonna choose six women's floors and four men's floors, that's stratifying based on the 60-40. And then use a computer to select 10 students from each of the chosen floors, which is an SRS. Um, typically, we just stick with one, as I said. Systematic sampling is when you choose every nth individual so, for instance, if people are standing in line at the cafeteria and I talk to every fifth person or every tenth person, that would be systematic because it's, you know, just taking every nth person. Um, it's typically easy and cost effective. We need to make sure, however, that the method isn't associated with any of the measured variables. So, for instance, if I'm surveying every tenth person in the cafeteria line about student fees or about tuition, those are all students at Bellevue University, that's systematic sampling and fairly unbiased. However, if I'm instead talking to them about the quality of food at the cafeteria, well, that's going to be biased because the people who are standing in line must not think the food is that bad or they wouldn't be there. Now that we've had a chance to talk about all of the sampling techniques, I would like for you to see if you can identify the sampling techniques that are used in each of the situations that I've given you. So please press pause, try all four situations, and then press play to check your work. So again, we're dealing with the same situation each time, but different sampling methods. We're looking at a survey of 300 passengers from the Tokyo to San Francisco flight. So for the first one, we're picking every 10th passenger that boards the plane, I'm assuming, or that checks in. And so every 10th passenger would be systematic sampling because we're choosing every nth term. Um, next one from the boarding list, randomly pick five from the first class and 25 from the rest. So I'm going to assume here that there are 50 total first class and 250 total coach um, out of those 300 passengers. So ch choosing five and 25 would then be stratified because we're looking at the same strata based on first class versus coach. Um, randomly generate 30 seat numbers and survey the passengers who sit in those 30 seats. That would just be the good old SRS because we are randomly selecting, we're not worried about male, female, we're not worried about first class, coach, etc. It's just randomly generating 30. And then randomly selecting a seat position uh, and I apparently didn't finish this question, but randomly selecting a seat position and then talking to everybody in that position, that would be a cluster.